when you're overseas, when you hear about Canada, you know, it's like big things, like it's like a peaceful country, respecting human rights, like you have a right to defend yourself and told, you know, what happened for you and they're going to treat you humanely. And after that, you can build your, you know, your future and have like a bright future in this country. That's what you see from outside. He came to Canada uh, asking for, for, for refugee uh, because of the oppression that uh, happens in Egypt. You know, people uh, get taken in just by connection. And that's what uh, happened to him. It was a nightmare. When they arrested me the first time, I, I didn't even know why. They, they didn't show me anything, just a paper. And they told me that uh, they're going to send me to my uh, country after three days. So they put me in jail, in RDP jail, with criminals, with uh, gangsters, without knowing anything about my case. And they told me, we, uh, we, we uh, want to send you, to deport you, because uh, ceases has grounds to believe that you were or you are or you will be dangerous for national security. Imagine uh, my husband has been seven years in, 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 uh, in jail without knowing the evidence against him, without uh, under the fear of uh, deportation to uh, torture and um, under what so-called security certificate. In terms of the evolution of them, I think uh, it's fair to say that uh, even for some time before uh, 2001, they were already being used to target people of Arab or Muslim um, backgrounds. What the security certificate has become, in our opinion, is a kind of um, ordinary rendition process, a legal way in which our government can send someone to um, a place where they will get tortured. You, you cannot imagine what means they put you in a small cell, two meters, three meters, they close the door and they tell you, you're a terrorist. If he's been taken here, if he goes back to Egypt, he will go straight to jail and be tortured there. Uh, it's, it's tough life for me because this is the first time, you know, in my life in jail. And I don't have experience, you know, how to deal with it and uh, find myself, you know, behind like small cells, door closed 24 hours. The light like uh, more than 16 hours. When they turn on light, it's not turn half, just halfway turn light off, it's still light. And find myself, you know, it's very hard. What time is it? What's going to happen for you? You know. I spent most of the time, you know, crying at night. You don't know what's gonna happen for me, and uh, it's now suffering, you know, inside. Like, it's like, uh, and too much, you know, thinking. And I was like, on like that time, it's just pushing for deportation, and like, file was beginning. I don't know what's gonna happen for me, and it's it's a nightmare. I met with my lawyer, uh, Maître Joan Doyon. And she gave me 
400 pages. Nothing about me, except 14 pages. In those 14 pages, it was a, a profile, a recent profile, s saying that I am Arab, one. I am Muslim, two. Three, I'm black belt in karate, and I, I was teaching martial arts. Four, I'm married, I have two children. Five, uh, I was doing a master's degree in University of Montreal and I was planning to do my PhD. Six, I am owner of a restaurant. And seven, I did a trip to Pakistan. Seven. So, they put me in jail for 21 months. And I took a clear strategy. I refused to, to testify. So I asked people I knew, my teachers, some of my friends, uh, my family, to testify on my behalf, because I didn't want to, to, uh, to participate to a Kafkaian trial. I cannot cross-examine the people who are uh, testifying against me. They, they, they can obtain torture from Guantanamo Bay, from Abu Ghraib, from a black site of uh, the CIA. And I cannot even challenge those evidence, those, those secret evidence. So I refuse to participate in uh, this parody de justice. So after 21 months, I finally talked with the judge. When the judge promised me, he told me, if you talk to me, I will release you. The things that, of course, is important to bear in mind from the outset when we talk about security certificates is that it's a process wholly distinct from the criminal justice process. Under our criminal law, all of us are considered innocent until proven guilty, and proven guilty where the Crown has a burden to establish our guilt beyond a reasonable doubt. In the security certificate process, there's not so much as a charge laid or an indictment. Uh, a person is simply uh, detained on the basis of the certificate that's signed by the minister, uh, and it's not until that person essentially can prove their innocence that uh, they may be released. And was detention, they took him. Uh, at the beginning, he was in uh, general population. And uh, after 9-11, they put him in segregation. Uh, so most of his time was in segregation, in, in West Detention, uh, with all kinds of mistreatment, uh, f physically, verbally, and otherwise, mentally. And uh, of course, uh, as I said, in, uh, in uh, West Detention, he had developed the hepatitis C, he had developed, like, uh, he injured his knee and it needs operation until now it's not done and lost his eyesight and uh, and developed uh, blood pressure and other issues and uh, it was complete refusal that they were refusing to give him any medical treatment for any of those uh, illness uh, just because he's under on security certificate so my husband went on a uh, hunger strike, 79 days of hunger strike. And um, just for to, 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 to get uh, medical attention. He was not able to touch his kids at all. He was like, you know, when we go visit, uh, always behind glass, hugging and kissing behind glass. Uh, we're having trouble even communication because most of the time the telephones are not working proper. Many times we were denied visits. My children were denied visits to, 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 my, to, to my husband uh, as a punishment for uh, demonstrating to, to, for the freedom of their father, to ask for those secret evidence. So they said, you're not allowed to visit just because of that. He said, okay, uh, we will move them to better place, which uh, a federal uh, facility and uh, in the federal facility, they will have their uh, uh, rights as others and uh, they will, will be able to have touch visits and uh, uh, education and medical treatment and so on. 
So uh, they moved them to what we call it now, uh, Condenamo North. And uh, first when they moved there, they denied, uh, the, they got denial of, uh, of uh, education. No education whatsoever. Um, they don't have the right of, uh, of touch visit as other, as most criminal people. The most criminal per people in federal jails have a right of three days of trailer visit with their families or girlfriends or whatever. Uh, three days. We don't have that right. It's, it's, it's not a physical uh, bracelet. No, the bracelet is, is now it's in my mind. So every morning uh, before going to the school, because I'm a I'm teacher, I have to call my father or my mother to go with me. So my children know every day that they cannot live with me in the car without my mother or my father. The older one is six six years old, and I have my my. Uh, my uh, son, four years old, and my daughter, two years old. We have the strictest conditions in Canadian history. Uh, Mo has to wear a GPS bracelet where, that he can show you later on, and when he goes out, he has to carry a monitor with him, which is quite heavy. It's a little bit heavier than Mr. Shakawi's, um, so I believe it's like a pound or two. We can show you that as well. Um, all the people that we meet have to be pre-approved, so you have to give date of birth, personal information, address, and um, then Canadian Border Service Agency lets us know, okay, you can associate with that person or not. That's if we meet them outside or, as you can see, inside the residence. Um, and that has to be done at least 48 hours in advance. So, for example, my seven-year-old niece had to be approved. She couldn't come for sleepover this summer because CBSC wouldn't allow somebody to come sleep over here. My grandmother had to be approved. Everybody had to be approved. When I meet my sister outside the residence, I have to let uh, CBSA know I will be meeting my sister. I will have my niece with me. Um, all our outings, which are only three times a week for up to four hours, so we have a maximum of 12 hours a week, um, we have to pre-approve the outings. So I have to email CBSA and say, in 48 hours from now, I would like to go to this Tim Horton. I would like to go to that restaurant and do this and do that. All the locations that are not on the outing, we cannot go to. And we're followed by two CBSA officers. The first um, time we were followed was by full tactical. They were wearing full tactical gear. They have a big truck and they follow us everywhere. We've just started recently boycotting the outings because we are sick and tired of being followed around by CBSA officers um, because it is not part of our original bail package. We, when we signed for bonds and when we signed for release, it was not a, a condition that we were being followed by CBSA officers. We have to stay in Ottawa. Our mail, our phone is intercepted. We have large surveillance cameras that were put on our house. There's only three of us that can stay with my husband. Uh, I have to be inside the residence with my husband at all times. So on top of wearing a GPS bracelet and everything and the cameras and all that, I have to be inside the residence with him at all times. So I don't work. He doesn't work. We can't go nowhere. If he steps outside in the property, which is only between 8 a.m. to 9 p.m., I have to step outside with him. And his bracelet can only go 100 feet in the back and the front. So, for example, if we take out garbage together, we have to do it together. If he steps back in the house, I have to step back in the house. We have to be able to let CBSA in at all times. That's 24 hours a day, seven days a week. They can come in and inspect whenever. And one of the conditions that he cannot speak Arabic when he's out in public, so that I can understand what he says at all times. But he can speak on the phone with people I know he can speak to because the phone is wired. Uh, the big problem, it's not like... Uh you know, the house, the big problem, it's, you know, they let us, they let me think always, you know, teleportation coming after this one, I'm thinking, you know, my mind, it's not clear, you know, still thinking, you know, this man, me to Algeria, what's going to happen for me? It's like, it were threats. Threats, you know, it's like... Uh, he feels like a dog on a leash with his bracelet. We, we, we don't feel like human beings. For me here at home, I am uh, the mother, I'm the father, I'm working in his case, and I'm trying to answer the children's questions. Where is my daddy? When he'll be home? What did he do to deserve to be there? One day, uh, La Ville, the city, um, organized open doors. So I went with my daughter and my, uh, and my son and my father. And uh, we, uh, we visited uh, every, everything, the pompiers, uh, fire. Firemen. Firemen, and uh, all, uh, everything about the city. 
And I asked my, my son to go inside a police car, and he refused. I told him why. He told me they're bad guys. I told him that the police to protect us. He told me I don't like them. I said, why? Uh, he was uh, three years old. I told him, you don't want to be cop? He told me, no, I hate cops. I said, how can a boy three years old hate cops? He told me, no, I don't like them. They are bad boys. So I, I, told, I told him, no, actually, they are catching the bad boys. He told me, huh? I said, yes, and they are putting them in jail. So he told me, but in jail, you were in jail. I say, ah, yeah, but sometimes they did a mistake. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's really, it's, it's, sometimes it's really hard to just to explain to him that uh, even in jail, you have not just bad boys in jail. We've become different people, you know. He's spent 43 months in jail and I've spent four, four years campaigning. I've never campaigned in my life. I've never been, I was never at a demo or a rally before. Um, I never knew that I'd speak out on the issue of terrorism and things like that. It's, it's made us much, much tougher. Um, I'm angry. Uh, I've got a lot of anger. His anger is, I wish he was angrier. I mean, but that's the type of person he is. He's soft-spoken and... You know, we want like, well, first we met, you know, we were thinking like anybody else have like future, you know, house, kids and something like, like normal people. Like now it's like... In your face. You know, fighting like big things, like small things, because we have nothing else to do. Then, yeah, allegation. It's not easy, but it's secret trial. How are we gonna clear it? That's points. Is it's not. If you open trial, it's easy for us. You know, to we're gonna walk next day. But mm -hmm. problem, everything is behind uh, behind the wall and close the door, and it's very hard to for me to def defend myself. I've met all the guys. They're good guys. They're good men, and. They deserve to have a fair trial and a right to defend themselves. That's all we're asking for. I'm really happy that the Supreme Court stopped Kelaretzit Mascara because it has nothing to do with justice, with, 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 uh, with the Canadian values, with even uh, human being values. You cannot put somebody in, in, in a jail and tell all, all the nation, all people uh, through the media that this person is really a danger to national security and is a threat without giving him a fair trial. It's hard, you know, you can't like, you can't plan nothing. You're just like waiting what's gonna happen next and waiting when you're gonna decide, you know, some days you have like, see now Supreme Court decide after one year we have to like, we left out of darkness, you don't know what's gonna happen. They're gonna come with a new law, they're gonna come, same things, just a little bit change, we're gonna suffer same, same, same circumstances, they're mm -hmm. gonna find the security certificate reasonable. This new trial might last for years. I think it's damaging uh, the reputation of Canada, it's damaging the human right of Canada, damaging the democracy of Canada. <clears throat> I'm a Canadian and uh, I love Canada and I want Canada to be the best as it's always known among the world. The age of darkness is on civil liberties that's been happening to this country. That's right. Yeah. And we as Canadians must raise our voices to make sure our basic human rights are not trampled upon. You know, we just recently apologized to the Chinese for the head tax. We apologized to the Japanese for their internment. We apologized to the Ukrainians for their internment. You study the history of this country and then you realize the reason we have a charter of rights and freedoms is to atone for the past help us, guide us to the future, and make sure those kind of situations never, ever arise again. Yeah. But that's what we have happening. How can we take people from their wives, from their kids, and put them in jail, and 
ignore them completely with any of them, even simple little demands of some dignity, even inside the jail. It is Canada, the country that we look at as the symbol of morality and the symbol of rights and the symbol of generosity by receiving refugees and by receiving people from around the world to give them a shelter in this country in a total welcoming uh, and loving atmosphere. I think we're in a very dangerous time where the borders of legal disciplines is disintegrating and all sorts of administrative regimes such as our immigration regime is being used for criminal law purposes by governmental authorities just to escape the very important restrictions that we place on law enforcement when we deprive people of their liberty. Lest you feel too comfortable about being a Canadian citizen and protected, well, let me tell you, in 2004, attempts were made to put the security certificate in the Citizenship Act so it would apply to citizens. Do we want to jail people, potentially, indefinitely, or at least for a very long period of time, without the benefit of the doubt available at criminal law when our criminal law uh, provisions as they now are and our law enforcement seems quite capable of meeting the challenges posed by the threat of terrorism. I think that's a very, that's a very good question and one that uh, really Parliament has to reflect seriously on. cannot, or she cannot, that special advocate, cannot discuss the evidence with the person concerned. Well, if you can't discuss the evidence with the person concerned, how can you prepare a defense? Now we're left in a situation probably where we'll have to go back to the courts again and it, as you know, it costs a lot of money. We're up against big government that have lots of resources. Uh, these gentlemen and their lawyers uh, don't have those same resources. So it's an uphill battle, but this case has to go back to the Supreme Court so that this will be overruled again. Libéré, Sarkawi, déporté, Sarkwen!